Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Would everyone please stand for a short prayer and a salute to our flag. Almighty God, grant us the wisdom to make those decisions that are in the best interest of all our residents. May the Heavenly Father of us all bless those who have given the ultimate sacrifice in service to our nation, and may he watch over and protect our service men and women now guarding the gates of freedom. Salute to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Statement of publication. Take notice that this regular agenda meeting of the Mayor and Borough Council being held on this 28th day of May 2024 has been posted and advertised in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Roll call. Councilperson Valka. Here. Polisi. Here. Noha. Roberts. Here. Sonarski. Here. Zabrowski. Here. Okay. Uh, Council President, would you um, um, take care of uh, prior minutes, please? Uh, yes. I move the following minutes. Approved on roll call vote, subject to correction if necessary. The March 26th receipt of bids and May 13th regular and agenda session. Second. Uh, roll call. Councilpersons Roberts. Yeah. Valka. Yes. Polisi. Yes. Zanarski. Yes. Zabrowski. Yes. Okay. Uh, today or this week is actually uh, Municipal Clerk uh, Week, where we thank and honor our municipal clerks, without whom nothing uh, could really get done in the borough. <clears throat> so whereas the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government, exists throughout the world, and whereas the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk is the oldest amongst public servants, and whereas the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk provides the professional link between the citizens, the local governing body, and agency of government at other levels. And whereas professional municipal clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all. Whereas the professional municipal clerk serves as the information center on functions of local government and community. Whereas professional municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the Office of Professional Municipal Clerk, through participation in education programs, seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state, provincial, county, and international professional organizations. Whereas it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk. Now, therefore, I, Kennedy O'Brien, Mayor of the Borough of Sayreville, Professional Municipal Clerks Week and further extend appreciation to our professional municipal clerk, Jessica Morales, and to all professional municipal clerks for the vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Nicole. Okay. I just need a motion to accept that proclamation. Make a motion to accept the proclamation. Roll call. Council Persons Roberts. Yes. Salka. Yes. Khaleesi. Yes. Narski. Yes. Zabrowski. Yes. Thank you all. all. Right. Uh, we have we have some tax appeal business which will be held in executive session. How long, Donna? Uh, we should be five yes. to ten minutes. Okay. Is there a motion? read the red zone. Go ahead. Whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas this public body is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, now therefore it be resolved by the Mayor and Borough Council, the Borough of Sayreville, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, as follows. The public portion of this meeting is hereby adjourned in order that the governing body may meet in closed private session for approximately 10 to 15 minutes to discuss the following matters, litigation and contract negotiations. Following the conclusion of said closed session, the governing
governing body shall reconvene the open portion of this public meeting to consider any other matters which may be properly brought before it at this time. The nature and content of the discussion which occurs in closed session shall be made public at such time as the need for non-disclosure no longer exists. This resolution shall take effect immediately. Donna. Make a motion to go into closed. Second. Roll call. Council Persons Roberts. Yes. Balka. Yes. Colisi. Yes. Narski. Yes. Zabrowski. Yes. We'll be five or ten minutes.
I make a motion to reconvene. Second. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Council Persons Roberts. Yes. Falca. Yes. Colisi. Yes. Anoha. Yes. Sonarski. Yes. Zabrowski. Yes. All business. Public hearing on the following ordinance, ordinance number 22-24, Borough of Saville, County of Middlesex, ordinance addressing fees for the Department of Recreation. At this time, I'm gonna open uh, this ordinance uh, for comments from the public. Are there any comments on this ordinance? Ordinance 22-24. There being no questions, I'll entertain a motion. Councilman uh, Sonarski. The ordinance adopted on second and final reading as advertised according to the law. Second. Second. Oh. Roll call. Council person Sonarski. Yes. Balka. Yes. Polisi. Yes. Noha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Zabrowski. Yes. Ordinance number 23-24, Borough of Serval County of Middlesex, an ordinance regulating removal of garbage, refuse, and rubbish in the Borough of Serval County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey. Okay, I'm gonna open the public portion for any comments on ordinance 23-24. Are there any? Yep, Mary. Okay, it's on now. Mary Novak, One Scarlet Drive. I notice uh, under Section 3, it says the responsibility of the owner. Uh, when you rent a piece of property, the owner often is prohibited from going on the property. When the next ordinance, you say owner or tenant. And this one just says the owner is responsible. Matt? Um, you can do either one. I mean, so from a legal perspective, No. But, um, you know, the, the council of the number one to amend it, um, you could pass it tonight and come back later and amend it. You could make a motion to amend it now, but I think uh, adding liability to an additional person, I think, would require us to read. Uh, I wouldn't be comfortable saying that you could okay. amend it and, and do a final okay. tonight. So. All right. I, I know from sad experience that even outside, if it's the backyard, you're, the owner is not allowed to go in without the tenant's permission, and only once a year are you allowed. So if there's a problem, the owner can't address it. Just a thought. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments, rather? Uh, I'll take a motion. Council, Councilman Inojo. Uh, thank you, Steve Mayor. I think that you know our resident brought up a very good position on this on this ordinance, and I think it's worth considering uh, the, the adjustment. I can't hear you, Christian. I think that the resident brought up a very good um, position to the ordinance, and I think that we should consider the, the adjustment. Well, we can come back and amend it. Okay, we can do that, then. I, I like to do that. Did you want to introduce it tonight? Sure. I mean, I, I wanted to confirm that my introducing it wouldn't affect the potential amendment. What I think, what I think you would do is you would uh, make a motion to amend the, the current ordinance to include owner or tenant. Okay. If that is accepted by majority, you know, there'd be a vote on that. Right. If, that's a, if that is accepted by a majority of the governing body, then we would re-advertise. We wouldn't have any further action on this tonight. You could re-advertise you know, re right. it so, the next meeting. And so it's, it's not really an, a motion to adopt the ordinance. It's more of a motion to uh, um, amend the ordinance. Uh, at least amend the ordinance language. And you can do both, actually. You can pass it and then come back and amend it. That, that's pretty routine. You, you could do that, too. You could basically pass this ordinance in its current form and then introduce, essentially, an amendment to the past ordinance. You could do that, too. I'd rather not do it that way. I'd rather just work on the adjustment. So, is, uh, uh, so motion, what, what's your motion? To, uh, motion to amend the ordinance. Motion to table? Yep. For further review? Yes, please. Is there a second to that? Second. Tabling it. Well, I, I thought clear, I think if, if the motion is also to, to uh, add the language um, uh, like that you know, with the tenant, then the motion should be to table final action on this and to amend so that we don't have to redo begin it. and do it all. all right. So why don't, why don't you give the legal talk and then the councilman can say so, you know. So moved it. Yeah. Perfect. So this would be a, a motion to amend the proposed ordinance 2324 to uh, owner or tenant and to table final action on the current proposal so that it can be amended and set for final action as amended. 
Thank you. Okay. So moved. Just so you know, Christian, this this now will trigger it to go in front of the rent leveling board. Yep. All I, right. I think again, I think that uh, I appreciate that uh, clarity. And um, if it's needed, I think that it's you know so so okay. be it. Uh, is there a second? Second. Roll call. Councilperson Zanoha. Yes. Balka. Yes. Colisi. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Sonarski. Yes. Zabrowski. Yes. Public hearing on ordinance number 24-24, Borough of Cerville County of Middlesex, an ordin ordinance regulating removal of grass, weeds, brush, and other debris in the Borough of Cerville County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey. Uh, are there any comments on this ordinance? Being no comments, I'll entertain a motion. Councilman Anoha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to adopt uh, Ordinance 2024 and move the public hearing to be closed and the ordinance adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Second. Okay. Roll call. Councilperson Zanoha. Yes. Falca. Yes. Polisi. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Sonarski. Yes. Zabrowski. Yes. Ordinance number 25-24, Borough of Cerville County of Middlesex, an ordinance adopting the Public Health Nuisance Code of New Jersey for the Borough of Cerville County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey. Are there any comments on this ordinance, Mary? <clears throat> Mary Novak, one Scarlet Drive. You have to excuse me, I forgot to bring my regular reading glasses. This is gonna be tough. Um, the uh, law, that where that this ordinance refers to. Um, I know you're not going to answer any questions, but I'm going to propose a few questions, and I'm going to ask everybody if you can't Please vote no on this ordinance. Has uh, I'm assuming that everybody has read the entire uh, du duties and everything that this refers to. Okay. Any matter, thing, condition, or act which is or may become detrimental or a menace to the health of the inhabitants of this municipality. What the heck does that mean? Anybody can say anything that it's a det detriment. Okay, any matter, thing, condition, or act, which is or may become an annoyance or interfere with the comfort of the general well-being of the inhabitants of this municipality. Is somebody that's got a uh, volleyball court in their backyard and they're constantly annoying their neighbor because the ball is going across the fence. Is this something that they would receive a fine for? Uh, pollution or existence or conditions which may threaten pollutants in the water, municipality. I mean, it's, it's just so general. It's, it can mean absolutely anything uh, to engage in into the open air from any stack vent chimney or entrance to any open air or from any fire into the open air or for such, such quantities of smoke, uh, fly ash, dust, fumes, vapors, mists, and gases as to cause injury, detriment, or annoyance to the inhabitants of this municipality or endanger their comfort, response, health, or safety. At some point, when all of you people are gone, because I know you don't intend on hurting the residents of the town. And the people, I'm sure, I don't even know who the heck is going to enforce this. That would be another question I'd ask you. Who's going to enforce this? The police? You know, code enforcement? Who would? But anyway. Hey, everybody, you can't have guest furnaces anymore because the fumes are a detriment to my health. I have heard people come into this council chambers many, many times and talk about burning of natural gas in furnaces and how we should all go to electric. But passing this in its current state, somebody else sitting here who feels differently than you, it could enforce that, that everybody has to get rid of their furnaces. There are a couple more things, excuse me. Uh, an existence or presence of any accumulation of garbage, refuge, manure, or any other animal or vegetable matter which may attract flies, to which flies may have access or in any way flor livae or pope breed or exist. Any person that has a garden in their yard, any person that composts, hey, any person that opens their garbage can and a fly happens to go into it will cause larvae. This is, I'm not saying that we don't need a nuisance ordinance. I'm just saying this is just so general. It could cause normal citizens to become criminals. And you, you're not here 
to do that to the residents, I'm sure. But you have to think of the unintended consequences. More things happen in this world, not just here. And it's unintended consequences. Things are passed because they sound good and, oh, you're helping the people, and they're not. I could list at least six other things in here, but I'm down to one minute. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Uh, just so everybody is aware, this was brought to us by our judge who was unable to enforce um, code regulations because some. Th this is really a housekeeping ordinance that was never adopted over the years. This was provided to us by the County of Middlesex, who also does our health inspections. Uh, and it, it's, it's essentially a housekeeping item so that the code enforcement can do their job. Currently, because we lack this, uh, nothing can, they, they can't enforce any, they can't enforce certain health codes. They can't go to court. And although not perfect, uh, I think that uh, there are 26 towns in Middlesex County. I think the majority of them use that. I asked the attorney who's also the mayor of Bridgewater. Matt, if you'd chime in on this. Yeah, I think just a, a couple of quick uh, points. So, you mind, uh, there's already, you know, you're adopting state standards. You're not coming up, you're not working from scratch and creating your own new set of standards. This is something that the state has adopted and used since I think 1950, uh, 1950 for generic uh, Second of all, nuisance is generally something that is, is broadly defined because it's very, be very fact specific. Because you might say, hey, just you know, playing music isn't a nuisance. Well, playing the same music at two o'clock in the morning is a nuisance. Or same thing, you have a barbecue outside, not a nuisance at on a Saturday, you know, ten o'clock at night, nuisance at three o'clock in the morning. Um, <clears throat> but there's definitions of what is a nuisance that rise to a certain level. And the other part from a practical standpoint is in most instances, uh, in every instance I can think of, what typically happens when there is a nuisance to the property is that Code enforcement will go out and it will talk to the resident and say, there's a problem here, need to update their reason. And they usually give the resident an opportunity to uh, you know, rectify it. Just fix it that day. If it's a one time thing, if it's a habit, in almost every instance, you have they give warnings, they give tickets. And even when they get tickets, it's usually a ticket to say, stop, fix the condition. And in most instances, when they fix the condition, Charges are dropped. It's usually only the recalcitrant people who really say, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to clean up my debris on my property. I'm not going to stop having a barbecue every, you know, every weekend at three o'clock in the morning that it becomes. So, um, you know, we looked at this. Uh, my office looked at it. The model ordinance, we also looked at it though, and uh, we don't have any issues with it. Um, code enforcement is there to use their judgment. There's certain state standards since 1950 that are in place. And of course, um, any of these issues have to go in front of the judge. It also looks at it. It's another check and balance there. If the judge thinks that something is not an issue, so. This was at the request of the judge. Yeah, uh, do, do, does anybody in the council have any questions uh, for, the, for the attorney on this? Okay. Are there any other comments on this ordinance? Okay, being no other comments, uh, take a motion, Councilman Anohu. Yes, thank you, esteemed mayor. Uh, before I make the motion, I just wanna add if possible, um, my thanks even to, to, to the comment on this ordinance. Um, I think it's been established that the language is designed to be general. So for those who do have um, a fear about that, I think that we should uh, continue, continue to trust our public safety officials um, to enforce it in, in due fairness. So, but again, I want to speak towards those fears, and um, again, we trust that this won't be manipulated uh, against you. But it's general because that's how the state um, has already designed it to be, as our attorney has said. With that being said, I'd like to make a motion to adopt uh, the ordinance and uh, move the public hearing to be closed, and for the ordinance to be adopted on second reading and final according uh, and final reading and advertised according to law. Second, second. Roll call. Council Persons in Oha. Yes. Falca. Yes. Colisi. <clears throat> yes. Roberts. Before I vote, I just want to um, say, Mary, I did have a lot of those concerns. We took this off so that we could do some more research on it. We had Kirk Mick come in to talk about some of the ways that it's being enforced. I had specific questions about smoke and um, fire pits. 
and there are other um, standards for fire pits. So if you're following those standards, that would not be um, an issue. I don't like the wording. I agree with you. I don't like the wording. And this, the problem with that is um, it's, it comes from the state and the state ties our hands quite often. And what it states is it may, this may be adopted without alteration or if so desired, any numbered section or paragraph can be um, deleted, but not substituted. So we've got our hands tied. If we want to change this um, separately, we'd have to do separate ordinances. And we can address that if that becomes a problem. Um, but in order to um, get done what we need to do, I am going to uh, say yes to it now, um, the way it is written, because that is how the state is making us do it. So, yes. Zanarski. Yes. Zabrowski. And next item. Ordinance number 26-24, an ordinance supplementing and amending ordinance number 40-23, fixing the salaries of certain borough officials, officers, and employees for the years 2023 to 2027. Are there any comments on this ordinance from the public? Being no comments, I'll entertain a motion. Councilman Balka. Will the public hearing be closed? The ordinance adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Sir, second. second. Roll call. Council Persons Balka. Yes. Polisi. Yes. Anoha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Zanarski. Yes. Zabrowski. Yes. No business. Or introduction of the following ordinances. Ordinance number 27-24, Borough of Several County of Middlesex, ordinance regarding totally disabled veterans tax exemption. Councilman Balka. Move the ordinance be approved on first reading, advertised according to law, and a public hearing be held on 6-17-2024. Second. Roll call. Council Persons Balka. Yes. Polisi. Yes. Anoha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Zanarski. Yes. Zabrowski. Yes. Ordinance number 28-24, Borough of Several, County of Middlesex, Ordinance Regarding Environmental Commission. Uh, Councilman uh, Roberts, Councilwoman Roberts. Thank you, Council Mayor. President Roberts. Thank you, Mayor. I move the ordinance be approved on first reading, advertised according to law, and a public hearing be held on June 17. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Council Persons Roberts. Yes. Salka. Yes. Felici. Yes. Noha. Yes. Zanarski. Yes. Zabrowski. Yes. Ordinance number 29-24, Borough of Several, County of Middlesex, ordinance addressing parliamentary procedure during council meetings. Councilman Balka. I'm not going to pass. I'm not going to move it. So if, if Who's second on your committee? Donna. Donna. I move the ordinance be approved on first reading, advertised according to law, and a public hearing to be held on June 17th. Is there a second? Second. Are there any comments? Roll call. Council Persons Roberts. Yes. Alka. No. Colisi. Yes. Anoha. No. Sonarski. Yes. Zabrowski. Yes. Okay. And Mayor, I just need to make one announcement before we go on to the resolution. Resolution 2024-131 listed on the agenda. The amount change is to $10,000 instead of $5,000. Okay. Can open it to the That being said, I'm going to open the public portion for comments on consent, uh, consent agenda items. Are there any comments? Being no comments, I'll entertain a motion. I move the consent agenda items be received on roll call vote. Second. Public close the public portion adopt the and adopt on roll call vote. There's second. Second. Roll call. Council persons Roberts. Yes. Alka. Yes. Polisi. Yes. Noha. Yes. Sonarski. Yes. Zabrowski. Was there anyone here for a liquor license? No. Okay. I need a motion to accept the correspondence as listed. I make that motion. Second. Roll call. Council Persons Roberts. Yes. Falca. Yes. Felici. Yes. Noha. Yes. Sonarski. Yes. Zabrowski. Okay. Um, yeah. Council reports. Admin administration and Finance. Councilman Balka. Thank you, Mayor. I don't have much tonight. Uh, 
our investments on our our return on investments is doing real well right now. So we're going to do real welcome end of the year, hopefully. Yeah. And other than that, progress. Thank you. Planning and zoning, Councilman Zabrowski. Thank you, Mayor. Just very quickly, I just want to uh, thank our uh, American Legion and our VFW for uh, several ceremonies yesterday, including our Memorial Day parade. Um, they, as always, do a wonderful job. We also appreciate our uh, community members as well as our volunteers. But one thing that struck me in particular, and I won't spend much time on this, but the speech from one of our co-grand marshals, uh, which was Eddie Streck, and he mentioned how um, his call uh, to help um, the vets for his entire life was based really on an incident that was very simple is when his father actually became aware of, I think it was World War I or World War II that had ended. And he went out uh, and played his violin on Main Street and he was joined by other residents and another resident who came with a flag. And you know, it's sometimes it's just the simple gestures that make the greatest impression on people. And I think he was just a wonderful uh, choice for Grand Marshal as well as Rob Bruce. And I congratulate both them as well as our, our vets. And, and as always, we honor those that we had lost in our in our borough as well. Uh, in progress, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Public safety, Councilman Anaha. Thank you, C. Mayor. Uh, no updates for public safety. Uh, trusting everyone had a glorious Memorial Day weekend. Uh, thank you for all those who served our country and um, for our improved liberties and uh, trusting that I'll extend into our council meetings as well. Thank you, esteemed mayor. Okay, public works, Councilman Kalesi. Thank you. The men and women of DPW did a fantastic job preparing for this uh, past weekend's Memorial Day event. Um, it was, the weather was beautiful. You couldn't have a better day. The road division is currently working on Eric Court with numerous sinkholes that are forming from the storm drainage pipe that runs through those properties. And they're also working at 53 Fanwood Drive about um, their yard uh, during the heavy downpours. So um, that's being covered. The street sweeper is out for repairs again. Uh, sanitation is progress. Parks, um, they had new lighting installed at the basketball court. Uh, behind the borough uh, building here. And uh, they had all the infields redone for the baseball. And the buildings and grounds have been busy uh, upkeeping the generators um, during the recent power outages that we had. And they've also been uh, busy painting offices here in the borough and over at the police station. Progress. Thank you. Uh, Recreation, Councilman Sinarski. Last week, we had our first car show at Kennedy Park. It was a huge success. We had over 60 vehicles there, and it's something for everybody to do. You know, it's not only for people that own cars. There was a lot of people that are just borough residents walking around. We had great food. There was an ice cream truck there, and it was a beautiful evening. The weather cooperated 100%. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next month one, which is going to be June 26th, again, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., also in Cerville, we're going to start our farmer's market on the 13th of June behind the Borough Hall. And then youth, youth activity for the kids, we are for the teens, we are working on that. So we're going to do something for the teens that are really not that active in sports, but they want to do other things to keep themselves busy. And we're, we're working on that to try to get something for that. Uh, also, July 1st is our first summer camp, Berks Park. And then the sports camps are behind the Borough Hall here. And other than that, progress and all the other things. Thank you, Councilman. Water and Sewer Council President. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I want to recognize that we had lost a pillar of our community recently, um, Mr. Carmen Spezi, and he will be um, greatly missed. And um, he'll leave a void. I know you're friends, and you'll probably say a few words about that. Um, the parade, uh, we were blessed to have the sun stay up for the parade. I'm telling you, I walked into the VFW after that and it started pouring. So it was, the parade was um, set up, the sun was set up just for our parade. So that was wonderful. And I do want to say, Mayor, it was an honor to stand in your place um, to accept the New Jersey Clean Communities grant for um, several for $103,000. And so when Denise gets back from her vacation, I'm sure she's going to find um, 
we are going to find good use for it in town. So that was um, quite an honor. Thank you, progress. Okay, thank you. Uh, just to um, discuss what, what the council president, we did lose a wonderful resident, a dear friend, a mentor to all. Uh, his, his professional life, he guided people through their, their the saddest part of their life and would bring them out the other side. And in his personal life, he was a he was a guide for many, many people on how to live life correctly, whether it be your family, your business, uh, just a truly wonderful guy, Carmen Speezy. We have put bunting on, on the entrance uh, in the front of Borough Hall uh, in his honor. Uh, personally, I don't think in my life I will meet another man such as such as he. So with that, we'll move on to general discussion. Authorization to purchase one John Deere Gator UTV through ESCNJ contract in an amount not to exceed $41,276.99. Any objections? Next item. Authorization to appoint Thalia Jimenez Morelos from custodian part-time to custodian full-time in the Department of Public Works effective June the 3rd. Any uh, any objection? Next item. Uh, we're looking for approval for a request received from Patricia, Patricia Stehan, omnibus operator, for an unpaid leave from May 2nd, 2024 to June 12, 2024. Is there any objection? Next item. Authorization to appoint John Fram as custodian part-time in the Department of Public Works, effective June the 3rd, 2024. Any objection? Anything else? Uh, That's it for me. Thank you. Uh, CFO report, Denise. Not here. Anybody giving her report? She doesn't have okay. Borough Engineers report, Jay Cornell. Thank you, Mayor. Just one item. This evening, you authorize us to prepare grant applications for DOT uh, municipal aid funds. Next meeting, we're going to need resolutions authorizing those applications to be submitted. So we'll provide okay. those to the clerk. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Before we go to the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Borough Attorney. No report. Okay. Uh, before I go to the public portion, I just I just want to go over with with the people of Saraville that Monday through Friday from eight in the morning to four in the afternoon, Borough Hall is open and you can call or come here in person and ask uh, and and get all the information that you want. Uh, I do have an office um, where I have uh, two. I have a chief of staff and I have a deputy chief of staff. When they came in the beginning of January, there was uh, th there's one email f for the mayor since email began at the beginning of the century, and that's mayor at Cerebral. It hasn't changed. Uh, there were 6,000 unopened emails. It is my firm belief that local government is all about customer service. It's about picking up the garbage, shoveling the snow in the winter, picking up the leaves. If you want to throw your couch out, we'll pick it up making sure the fire, uh, uh, the police, fire, and first aid uh, are well-equipped, well-trained, and they come out when, when they're needed. Uh, and that is the job of this governing body, is to make sure that we provide the proper customer service at, at the best reasonable price there is. Uh, I don't chase the cheapest price because then you get the cheapest product. I, ch I, I chase the reasonable price that gives exemplary service. Uh, so, uh, if you go if you go to the borough website, th there's a listing of every department. So, whatever your question is, will be answered either uh, on that phone call or if they need to do some research, um, they they will find out the answer for you. The other thing is, if you call the mayor's chief of staff office, they usually get involved with things that are a little bit more complicated. Uh, and require a little bit more research. Uh, but that's what they do. That's what they're there to do, which is to provide service to the public. Um, the, the council meetings are here to conduct the business of the borough. We're here to pay bills. We're here to discuss ordinances. We're here to, we're here to, to make sure that the best possible customer service uh, and municipal services are provided to the residents. That's our job. It's not, it's not to set national policies, not to set state policy. It, it's simple stuff. Uh, and, and we aim to do it well and efficiently and effectively. And, and 
you know, with our eye on how much it costs. So that being said, our public portion is more about comments. If you don't like something, that's fine. Uh, we need to know it. Uh, but but the questions, because the meetings of, of the previous four years were, were just egregious. They, they There was no control on them, and people would just go on and on and on because they needed a theatrical platform. And I put a stop to that. It served no constructive purpose. Um, we're here to run the borough, and, and we're here to do it efficiently and effectively. Uh, and that being said, I'm going to open the public portion. There is a five-minute limit. And you are certainly allowed to comment and complain, but this isn't the format uh, and this isn't the platform for answering the questions. It's Monday through Friday, eight, eight, eight in the morning to four in the afternoon. All the questions you can possibly think of will be answered by the various departments here in the borough. That is their job. So with that, I'll open the public portion. Are there any comments? Being no, Mary? <clears throat> Mary Novick, One Scarlet Drive. Um, I know I'm not supposed to ask questions, but in regard to the, the ordinance you were just discussing, um, it, a total of five minutes. Now, if you want to ask, and you can only speak twice, does that include the ordinances or just in the public portion of the meeting? Or is it the resolutions? So, so I think the uh, way the intended to work and speak with it a little bit, is that um, right now there's theoretically two public, well, there could be multiple public portions, right? Like tonight, if somebody wanted to speak on every final action, they could, they could speak mm -hmm. on every final action item. They could also speak on the resolutions. resolutions. Mm -hmm. And then this the, portion. Everything else. That, that part about the five minute total was intended to um, deal with the public portion at the beginning and end, or in some instances, there's people that talk twice. So they may come up, they may speak for their five minutes, and then a couple other people speak, and then they want to speak again. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to to limit on that. Um, there would that total would not apply to ordinances. By law, we have to open it to the public. Doesn't mean we have to give the residents carte blanche in how long they speak on each ordinance. But if you had a five minute cap and there were five ordinances, um, then you could be presumably from yeah, that, that's what I wanted so to know. That would not be in that instance. Okay, so it's when you're talking about the different sections of the meeting, right. we can speak as much as we want on the different things. Oh, five yeah, minutes yeah. or three minutes. I I'm, wouldn't say as much as you want, but <laughs> not gonna, on the ordinances, you have to have a right to speak on the ordinances. And can't. So it's separate from the two, the two okay. Um, I sat up there. It's not easy to take the questions. It's kind of hard being out here too. I didn't realize how hard it is until I've been coming to the meetings here. I'm just asking you again respectfully, leave it the way it was. Enforce the four minute, five minute rule. I agree with that. Some people were allowed to go on forever and other people's were shut off at the five minutes and it's not right. But the people have a right to come here. You ask for their vote and they really deserve the respect to be able to come here and speak and particularly have their questions answered. Because eight to four, Kennedy, I, I'm able to use my phone eight to four. When the kids take a nap, I can call and get these answers. A lot of people work eight to four. So the only time they have is at these meetings. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Hi. My name is Carol Angley. I live at 27 Ash Terrace. I've been living there since March 1954. I've been here for my whole life. During the April 29th, 2024 council meeting, at three hours, four minutes, and 22 seconds, you, Mr. Mayor, said, quote, nobody sits here so that assholes can take punches at us. At three hours, five minutes, 31 seconds, you said, this isn't the place to get into Q&A and get into fights and to have dopey people come up here who have no life. To say that I'm appalled is an understatement. I'm seething over this. I mean seething. To the point where I'm almost afraid that I can't be a lady, which is why I wrote everything down. 
But since I'm a better person than that, um, I'm not going to stoop down to the lower level of those comments. Um, this is what you think of everyone who lives in Saraville who comes up here. I mean, that's the impression that I got. Um, and I guess <laughs> I'm being considered one of those assholes that has no life since I'm up here now and have been up here before. These comments were said when Mary Novak came up to speak. And one of the things she mentioned, which she happened to mention tonight, was bringing back the ability to ask questions here. Every cerebral taxpayer has a right to question what goes on with their tax dollars. They are entitled to answers to questions so they can understand something that they may not totally understand. And those who are sitting here when a question is asked or watching on Zoom or who watch the videos after the meeting might also like to know the answers to the questions. In fact, it may be a question they thought of asking, but maybe didn't know how to go about it. Those who ask questions are actually asking on behalf of many of us. Now, after hearing those comments by you, it tells me that you really couldn't care less about what several taxpayers want to know. And it also gives the impression that you have no respect for them. At some of the earlier meetings I've attended, you actually seemed annoyed when someone did ask a question and then suddenly now you no longer allow them. What are you afraid of? I mean, seriously, granted, some people do come up here and make idiots of themselves and try to pick fights. And it happens. It's just part of human nature. And I also understand there are some questions you can't answer, like if there's pending litigation. Well, that makes sense. But uh, I had lost track of where I was. Those who ask the questions do so because they care about the town. And to be honest, we're all, we've all learned a lot from those questions. I also attended meetings under prior, the prior administration. Questions seemed welcome. And most of the time, the person got the answer they needed. And that was that, and the meeting moved on. Oh, boy. <clears throat> the previous mayor also seemed interested in the questions and wanted to help the resident. To me, you do not. I also can't help but wonder how other residents of Saraville, young, old, and those who voted for you, would think about what you said and feel about it and how they'd feel. Also wonder why it hasn't been put in the paper. Aren't reporters here? They should be. Those comments by you just added to the anger I have over the fact that we are now in a situation where several taxpayers are suing several taxpayers, all because of egotistical blowhard attitudes, a situation that would never have happened if those involved could just remember they work for the an answer to the people and the taxpayers, and they would just sit down, be civil with each other, and find a mutually agreed upon better site for the bus depot. You all ran promising transparency and accountability. Never in my life have I ever heard of an elected official talking to residents and taxpayers, the people to whom you promised to be accountable in such a manner. I always thought that someone got into politics because they wanted to help and serve their fellow Americans and in the process, hopefully make things better for the most, better for most, or maybe all. Just got two more sentences, if you don't mind. Lately, with what I'm seeing here in town, as well as on state and national levels, seems most politicians, especially of one party, are just in it for themselves. What a sad state of affairs, to say the least. Are there any other comments? Yes, sir. Um, I, I need your name and your yes. street. So, uh, Ben Kal Shaw, 22 Wisniewski. Um, Several resident for 24 years. Just have something written down here for to say here. Uh, good evening, Mayor and members of the Borough Council. I'm speaking on behalf of residents of Wisniewski Road and Page Terrace in the Town Lake West development. 
I come before you today to address a pressing concern regarding the recently constructed apartment buildings on Main Street adjacent to our residential area, developed by Kaplan Companies. While development is vital for progress, it is imperative that the well-being and privacy of existing residents are not overlooked in the process. It has come to our attention that despite the completion of the apartment buildings, there remains a glaring omission, the absence of privacy tree line between the new buildings and our backyards. This oversight threatens the privacy and tranquility of our homes and significantly impacts the quality of our life. The compound matters, Kaplan companies have bluntly stated that the responsibility for implementing a privacy tree line lies with the homeowner themselves. This refusal to acknowledge our role in ensuring, in ensuring the privacy and well-being of the community is deeply concerning and places an undue burden on our residents. To illustrate the severity of the situation, we have gathered photos showing the lack of privacy resulting from the, the absence of a tree line. These images right here depict the uh, direct line of sight into our properties from the neighboring buildings, exposing us to unwanted visibility and intrusion into our private spaces. While I understand the construction phase may be over, the impact on residents is ongoing. The inclusion of privacy tree line is not merely a request for aesthetics, but a fundamental necessity to mitigate noise, light, and unwanted visibility from the neighboring buildings. I urge the council to intervene and urge Kaplan companies to reconsider their stance on this matter. It is essential that they acknowledge our responsibility to the community and take appropriate action to rectify this oversight. The residents should not bear a full burden on ensuring their privacy and well-being in the face of such development. I implore the council to prioritize the well-being and privacy of the residents in its decision-making process and to hold Kaplan companies accountable for their, for their obligations to the community. Thank you for your attention and consideration. And if I may, can I submit? Um, Just hand them to uh, so the call. It's, three, it's three, three pages. The first page has the pictures of um, uh, the, uh, it indicates uh, the, 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 um, the lack of privacy three, three, three different properties have uh, on Wisniewski Road. The second page is a Google satellite image that indicates how many homes are you know, impacted on a page and Wisniewski. And the third page is a, a correspondence I had uh, with Brett Kaplan and Tricia DeTrolio on March 27th. Uh, expressing my concerns, my personal concerns about my home. We haven't heard back. Uh, I haven't heard back. And I know the residents haven't heard back from Kaplan companies. So, you know, we're hoping to, um, uh, we're hoping they, they become good neighbors, nothing else. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. Wait. Let's let everybody yeah. get it. So it's about, it's, there's no buffer. There's no buffer. It's a four-story okay. building. Okay, was there ever a buffer on the our backyards? Mayor, there was an approved landscaping plan. I would have to see where the residents are located and compare it to right. the land. When, when it makes its way down, okay. just hang, hang in there. Sure. Mayor. I would need to see the approved plans for the developments. I wouldn't be able to answer based on the question. I would have to look at the approved plans and then All right. provide an answer to you. Is, is, your, is your contact information on this? Um, only my email address. I'll give you my cell number. That's, that's good. That's good. Let, let the other guy see it. I can review the plans, Mayor, and advise the, the council and, and the resident what the plan calls for. Beyond that, since that was what the planning board approved, if anything is requested in addition to that, I don't think the developer has a legal obligation to do that. Beg your pardon, Jay. If, if the residents of Town Lake are asking additional trees to be planted that weren't on the original plan, I don't know that the borough can enforce, make the but developer do that, but we can I request they, it. I think they should know what, what was on the, what's on the plan. Right. Um, and then we'll go forward from there. Okay. All Sounds right. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, yes, ma'am. Mm 
Good if you could say your name and your address, please. Sure. My name is Sonal Patel, and I live on Wisniewski Road, 26 Wisniewski. And tagging on to what Mr. Shah said, I have two issues here. One is about the apartments which are constructed, and one of the apartment is right in front of, in, in the backyard of my house. So when I'm having tea or breakfast, I'm looking straight at the apartment. There are th it's three or four story, so the top floors are looking right into my bathroom. They built a fence which starts, which is, I don't know what's the logic here. They did not fence the whole backyard of that property. They have it for half portion and they have it another half portion. So when it comes to where my property is, most of these buildings are a little bit far apart. We are five houses which are affected, but my house has the building right here where you're sitting and where I'm standing is how we are situated. The other buildings are kind of at a crooked positions, but everybody is affected with the lights from the parking lot because they did not complete the fence. And the trees, I don't know what the plan is approved for, but we need tall trees because there is absolutely no privacy. I'm living here for 15 years and I feel like, why am I living here? Why didn't I move out of this city sooner? And when I got to know about this building, because I bought this house knowing it's a wetland and never expected it to be turned into a luxury apartment community, which is right in my face. So highly disappointed, and I hope you all get together and give us a resolution on this. The engineer is going to review the, the approvals and, and what's left to be done, ma'am. Okay. All right. Okay. And the, um, do you have a pad that you can set, give to the residents that will get all their contact information to call the impacted residents living in Town Lake? And the other problem is, so we are now surrounded by apartments from both angles. We have one which is existing Camelot property, which is inside Town Lake, and the one which is the new one. So the one which is inside Town Lake West, the, re the tenants of those apartments, they are parking their cars. There's a huge influx of car parking coming in from the apartment residents into our streets. We have blind spots. There are mostly, I mean, I've talked to multiple neighbors who said, oh, I almost met with an accident. Is there, is there, is there insufficient parking there for the, for the tenants? They have their parking plus they have garage. But everybody, there are a lot of cars which are on the street. Many of them, I guess, they have their businesses like pest control or electricians. So they have their bigger trucks which are mostly parked on the streets. Right. We'll, we'll look into that. Yeah, and a lot of them, they don't move their cars for days. Right. So okay. we request a permitted parking or some solution to that. Okay, thank you. Um, if you sure. could get the affected uh, homeowners. Sure. There was another young lady who wanted to speak. My husband wanted to address But you have to come up there. Well, did you want to speak as a couple? Yeah. All right. So I just need your, your last name in the street you live on. Sayed Daveed, 20 Visne Whiskey Road. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, we live at the uh, Cerebral, the corner first house. Right. Uh, the address is 20 Visne Whiskey, as, he, as, as my husband has mentioned. And we have addressed that uh, issue by sending email or, and um, uh, calling the Taplin uh, administrative uh, office by like pu pulling out through Google the address. We mentioned that that is not fair, that it is it's just build, start building, developing that uh, luxury rental behind our house. Then we did not communicate with our neighbors because everybody works nine to five and then have a busy life. But we communicate and like, you know, meet, meet, meet each other. All are my neighbors. We live in consequent like five houses. There is no privacy. Sometime I was taking shower and my, you know, we our bathroom has big windows. Our nukes has big uh, glass doors and leaving no privacy left. And we have requested that or the call uh, to that lady. That's kindly, please. We are really, you know, appreciate to living. We are neighbors. We need to, um, uh, uh, like, you know, be be uh, and responsible the for that to, like, you know, have privacy and like listen to each other and we have requested to plan as they have started developing the 
uh, complex that please start growing the hair and long uh, green uh, long, trees. long trees. But they said that it is not part of the uh, uh, plan. plan. It's, so if you have any as any problem, kindly please uh, uh, take that. Like you know, you need to do it yourself. We can we have no no budget for that. As Mister he has mentioned that if they want it, that's we communicated with each other like last week at what's going on. And like, you know, we literally block our uh, bathroom window and what we can do. I've been telling my husband that put the tinted glasses and we communicate because we sit and uh, workers are working and putting the right. the light glance. And like, you know, right now nobody is living. When they start living, what will happen? What will we do? And this is our house. We've okay. been living here 15 Let's years. Move to next. We, we, the engineer is, is going to review the, the requirements from the builder. And if you would put your information on that tablet that's being circulated back there, we will we will send you the information. Um, but that's not the end of it. Yeah, the, they so said that when we talked to find when we, a solution, when we spoke to them for the solution, we suggested them just planting the long trees, and as suggested by the other neighbor, that continuation of the fence. Uh, that they built and stopped and they didn't continue. When we spoke to them, that said, we have a proof plan and it's not going to change. We have all to go do whatever you can. And I said, I, I will go to the borough and we'll talk. They said, uh, we have a proof. I said, we could not see but whatever you have sent us before in their drawings and all that is not rendered drawings that we can see where it will be actually. Now, this is an actual life situation. And the next thing is, as as my neighbor has expressed, my house is the first house, it's worsely affected. My one car was totaled by some of those neighbors who are parking uh, in, in that street. One side was one side was made one-sided parking, I, I think, uh, last year, but still it is continuing. And I am sacrificing my, not parking my car in front of my house rather than these guys are parking. Right. And, we're, we're, uh, we'll have that looked at. We've had that in other communities and um, like up on, on uh, Gondek Drive. And they themselves uh, have there's restricted. A, there's a solution for that. All right. So, so uh, we, we first have to review it and and discuss it uh, at this level and then enact. And one more one more issue that my particular house has is I am the lowest in on the lowest of the ground level. Water level is high. These uh, apartment complexes are developed or made on by uh, what do you call that? Uh, raising the levels, or what do you call Water it? Level. Water, no, they higher they build it two levels higher than my house. So uh, maybe there is an insufficient water basin system or something. My house is my basement. basement some pump is up. always were always one has gone burned, and my ba and I call them and they sent somebody, Mister. Joe, or I forgot the name, he came and he saw, and he, I showed him uh, from Ke uh, Kaplan. And they said, oh, we will do something on Monday. Thanks to one of the council members, somebody, a uh, construction engineer, uh, he, he was able to connect and contact that person. But my, my sump pump is continuous. I have two now. They are continuously running. And something has happened that my, my water level has gone so up. So please uh, do uh, yeah, what you need to do. That, please. So I'll okay. provide my information. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments on this from that neighborhood? Yes, sir. Wayne in spirit, 228, Wisniewski. Uh, sorry, I came unprepared. Uh, I was invited by my neighbors. I have the same concerns as them. Okay. Um, so my house on 28, right in front of it, is the parking lot, right? So it's a little above eye level. Um, our concern is we could see it directly. There's no trees blocking it. Um, when the future residents of that apartment eventually go there, my concern is the light beams are going to go straight into the house, into my son's bedroom, into my daughter's bedroom, right. into the bathroom as well. Okay. Um, the other day, um, uh, my daughter uh, graduated from University of Connecticut on May 4th. And then now she's in Boston. She was with us for three uh, three weeks. Um, she was excited to lay out in the sun. Um, she did for a couple of minutes, and then she was harassed by the, um, I guess, onlookers, the workers from there. And then you know, it, it, she's not comfortable doing that anymore. Um, 
when we bought the house, we were promised that, you know, we specifically chose that lot because the backyard is, you know, wetland, swamp, very nature, right? So, um, you know, it, 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 that was promised to us. I, I just wanted to say that. That's all I have to say. Okay. Are there any other questions from the neighborhood? Okay, Jim. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. Jim Robinson, Harlan section of town. Yesterday, we honored those who died in defense of our rights and freedom. Freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, the right of due process, the freedom to be heard and to question our officials, the freedom not to be intimidated or called names as we petition the government. Tonight, we open the meeting by praying for those defending the gates of freedom. Now, earlier this year, you've already eliminated our right to question you. Tonight, the day after we honored those who died protecting our rights and freedoms, you're introducing an ordinance to limit those rights and freedoms even more. I wanna thank Councilman Balka and Councilman Noha for Dan, for not introducing that, and both of you for voting no on it. I will give you this, though. I'd like, on a positive note, you are consistent. I mean, the transparency team came into office by virtue of a secret dark money campaign account. Apparently, the only people who know who bankrolled it are the mayor and his chief of staff, who was the chair of that secret fund. Then... Ending a custom and tradition in this once great town that goes back before any of you were born, you took away our right to ask questions, or at least you won't answer them. Now, the transparency team wants to limit our right to speak because sometimes these meetings last a whole hour or more, hour and 10 minutes. What do we talk about? I talked here and to my friends in the county about the need for a cerebral resident to replace Joe Giuliano on the MCUA because as the host community, we should be represented. And I hear that's going to happen. I appreciate, appreciate that the county commissioners are doing that. We talked about pilots. The people here came and talked about taxes, water contamination, preserving historic buildings, street lights, traffic, open space, discounts for seniors on their cable bills and affordable housing for veterans. A woman talked about the mold in her Lakeview apartment that was making her family ill. A father talked about a dangerous traffic situation on Ernston Road where his daughter was in a serious accident and asked that we do something about it. The folks here that came and spoke about this serious problem all spoke for more than three minutes. And one of the gentlemen we stopped at five minutes. He went up, but I timed, went on for seven minutes. But he had a serious problem. He had a concern. And that's important. And these things might not be important to you, but they're important to us. They're important to the people of the town. It's been said before, and Mayor, I would just say this. You talked about people who go on and on and on. The COA decision that you ratified was overturned because people here brought it to a judge or made it go to a judge who, who overturned what you did. It's been said before that secret government can be corrupt government. You're not doing anything to dissuade us of that. And we passed five ordinances. We introduced three. We passed 34 resolutions. We raised the uh, recreation fees. Thank you, Stash. And we did all this in an hour and 15 minutes. So time isn't the issue. Time isn't the issue. So why are we doing this other than to shut the public up? And I talked about the cable TV ordinance that was tabled. We had some time, Councilman Zabrowski, I asked since you spearheaded that and I appreciate that, if you were able to look into getting a discount for senior citizens um, on their cable bill. The state law provides for that, some towns do it. I hope that, I didn't mean to ask a question, um, but I, I hope that we can look into that. And let me just raise another point to the attorney. That issue, was, I believe, was tabled a few meetings ago. 
and I think, was it not? Was it the cable TV? Or, oh, you're, you weren't here. I think an associate was here. I think under Robert's rules, if something is tabled and it's not brought up at the immediately subsequent meeting, it dies. So we might have to start all over on that. So I'd appreciate it if you'd look into that. And I, uh, I thank you two gentlemen for standing up for the residents and voting no on that ordinance. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments? <clears throat> Mary? <clears throat> Mary Novak, One Scholar Drive. I'd just like to make a uh, echo what Kennedy said about uh, Carmen Spezi. Um, he was larger than life, Mr. Sayerville. And one of the comments I made when we were at church was, I've never seen the church this full. It takes Carmen to get people to come back to church because you know what it's been like since COVID. Everybody's afraid. Nobody was afraid to be there. And they shook hands and they... It was really, it was real coming together and it would be just like Carmen to have that. I hope that continues. Also, just, I know back in, I think it was January, we authorized the engineer to look into um, the condition of the firehouse next door. Have we gotten any kind of report? Have you? We just approved that last meeting, Mary. Oh, I missed it. That hasn't happened yet. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Have a nice okay. evening. Thanks, Mary. Are there any other comments? Being no other comments, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to close the public. Excuse me, Mayor, can I make one comment? Sure. On my council report, I forgot one important thing. Everything that we did at that tremendous day that we had at Kennedy Park would not have been done with the outstanding work that the DPW did and all the work that the Recreation Department did. So I just got to put a shout out to them. Thank them very much. Sorry, I missed them in the earlier conversation. Go ahead. Go ahead. I make a motion to close the public. Second. Roll call. Aye. Oppose. Make a motion to uh, adjourn. Adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you, everyone. My son catches bubble header.